Father, I set our praises in Jesus' name. As I open my mouth to speak, O oh Lord, use me for this purpose in Jesus' name. Sanctify me to do your will in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Somebody say amen. 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 Me to man leader, shout hallelujah. Amen. So, within the next 40 minutes, we want to look at understanding and applying internal operations in the youth fellowship. You don't expect people from outside to come and work for you. Everything that God has endowed you with is what you are going to use to move the fellowship forward. Understanding and applying internal operations in the youth fellowship. John chapter 15 verse 16. Shall we open our Bible and read? John chapter 15. Just one verse. Verse number 16. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you, set you apart, position you, put you in place, ordain you that he should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain, should be visible. We should see it. We should embrace it. And that whatsoever he asks of the Father, in my name, he may give it unto you. Amen. Well, to everything, there is a purpose. This verse of the Bible says, I have ordained you. I have put you in position. I have set you apart. I have positioned you. For what purpose? For the purpose of producing what? Fruits. That we stand, that your world we see. To everything there is a purpose. Jesus made his disciples realize the reason he chose them to go and bear fruit that will remain. The disciples on mission later came back to feed Jesus back on their field work. In the same vein, the khaki of administration was decentralized in terms of seven operational structures with a view to bringing the youth administration at the center to the grassroots. Each level of the structure is saddled with responsibility to play some vital roles for the enhancement of the overall administration of the fellowship. Understanding and applying internal operations in the youth fellowship under the central theme, middleman leaders, is the focus of this paper. And we shall begin with the definition of some terms. Most of these terms are not uh, unfamiliar with us, but just for the purpose of a uh, recap. We want to see who is a middleman. The central theme is a middleman or middleman leaders. A middleman refers to an intermediary or agent between two parties. In commerce and industry, it refers to an intermediary between the producer of goods and the final consumers. In the same vein, every level of the operational structure between the national body and local assembly is acting in the capacity of middleman bringing the administration of the fellowship from the center to the grass root. In the various in the assembly, I learned that the assembly leaders are not here, and the district uh, coordinators are not here too. But in their various capacities, they are acting as what? As middlemen. District coordinators acting as middlemen. The DDC youth coordinators acting as middlemen. The unit coordinators acting as middlemen. The center coordinators acting as middlemen. Regional coordinators acting as middlemen. Between the national department and the uh, assembly. So when we see ourselves in that capacity, then we know what we are called upon to do. 
It's not a matter of play. We are assigned to do something. The assembly is a acting middleman between the ministers in charge and the fellowship. Am I right? District is coordinating the assembly or standing as liaison officer between the assembly and the zone or DCC and so on and so forth until we get to the regional uh, level which is now connecting the fellowship with the national body through other levels within the structure. Amen, somebody. Now, internal operations in the context of the youth fellowship to refers to those people in the various levels of the fellowship or fellowship structure that are involved in the administration of the fellowship to ensure the achievement of the overall goal of the fellowship. The goal in this case, I think, is grassroots administration so that people at the assembly level will know what is going on in the youth fellowship. They will not be in the dark as to what is going on and that is only possible when we as middlemen understand uh, the purpose of our assignment. God bless us in Jesus' name. Uh, we want to examine the roles of the middleman leaders in relation to the internal operations of the fellowship. And I divide this role into how many there? Five. 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 Number one is liaison role. As middleman leaders, our role is to liaise. And to liaise means to act as a link between two people or between two groups of people. The middleman leadership is to act as a link between the fellowship at the center and uh, the local level. It is to make sure that there's a good relationship between the center and the local assembly. That is what we're asked to do. You see, if we are not fulfilling our purpose, where well, there will be no connection, no good connection, no good understanding between the national center, between the center fellowship and the local assembly. We have to play liaison role, that is connecting, letting them know what the top wants, letting them know what are their expectations, letting them know what role are they to play to move the fellowship forward in their various capacities. And God will bless us mightily in Jesus' name. This role involves dissemination of information from the center to the local assembly from time to time through the inter internal operational structure put in place and ensuring compliance. Disseminate information and ensure compliance. Information will come from time to time from the head, from the top, and our own is to make sure that uh, it gets to the appropriate place so that there will be compliance. And let me tell you something. In for a communication, is a very, very vital organ in any administration. Somebody says, as the blood is to the body, so is communication, that is dissemination of information to any organization. When the blood fails to circulate within the body, what happens? That. The same thing, when communication is lacking, when information fails to go from, the, from one place to another, then the death of that organization is just a matter of time. So dissemination of information from time to time, from the center to the local assembly, from time to time through internal operational structure put in place and ensuring compliance. It also involves creating rapport. Creating what? Rapport. You see, we are having difficulties today because there is no rapport between the authorities of the church and the youth fellowship. As far as we are concerned, we have fought a lot of battles in our own time, right from the time of uh, the light of the world society. When the falcon could not understand the falconer, nothing will happen. So when there is no rapport between the pastor and the youth fellowship, there will also always be a problem. So, in the alliancing position, we have to make sure that there is a good rapport between the fellowship and the authorities of the structure where we are. The assembly, the youth fellowship, and the pastor, 
the district, you have to take the, 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 the DS uh, into confidence and create rapport uh, with them. You see, a lot of, a, a lot of issues have been ensured. We don't know, even when they know, they say, and they are doing something. What are you doing there? We are praying. And we didn't know that you are praying. You didn't tell us that you are, you are here to pray. I'm sorry, sir. Eh? We have seen a case where we are locked out during, during our own time. We were locked out of the church. And they said that we didn't tell them that uh, we want to organize prayer. And we were locked out. And we left the church. And we, we, we heard our prayer outside the church. Maybe something went wrong somewhere. Maybe there's communication breakdown somewhere. But that's why that's the essence of our, of, of our being a middleman. That is, make sure that the communication does not break down. When it breaks down, every other thing will break down. May God help us in Jesus' name. That's the first role, first expectation of putting you in place, of making you who you are. You have not appointed me. I have appointed you. And the appointment is not without a purpose. And may God help us to fulfill that purpose in Jesus' name. Then we have mobilization role. Mobilization role. Can somebody read from there? That's my own style of something. Mobilization role. Yes? Let only one person. Only one person. Let's give Sister Ajakaye Abi. I think I still remember that name. Abi. <laughs> okay? Yes? To mobilize. To work together. To work together to achieve a particular aim. Yes? Yes, that is mobilization. It also means to organize a group of people. To work together, then to organize a group of people to achieve a particular object. Yes. 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 As the case may be. Yes. And support. Yes. Mm -hmm. And spiritual. Uh -huh. Do we get that one now? Our role, second role, as far as this piece is concerned, is mobilization. Mobilization. Uh, during our own time, and time of natural society, we have late uh, Pastor S. C. Ido, late uh, Elder uh, uh, Ajibade of Makoko Den, late Pastor Adekwite, you see, and uh, now we, have, we still have uh, our uh, very friend Pastor uh, Olu Adebayo of uh, Kusofe DDC. You see, we were together at that time. If I have a car, I will make sure that uh, I use my car to carry as many people as possible. Uh, Baba Ido, who was using Nepal pickup at that time, he will use that vehicle to convey. He can convey and come back and carry us again, come back and carry us again. Why? Just to make sure that uh, we are mobilized to that particular program. So, it's a very important duty for us. Program will come from time to time. When I, when I came here, I said, ah, Pastor Asha, the population here is very uh, low. I say, I say it's only for DCC and the Zona coordinator say it's okay. So we are to mobilize. And mobilizing means letting them know what happens. Then organize them. Then encourage them eh, to make sure that they attend program regularly through adequate information, through adequate motivation, and what? And support. And support. As middleman leaders, you must be prepared to spend your money. That you can, that's nothing you can do like that. Except you want to fail. Because this is a department where majority of our members are students. And that we want them to attend programs. We have to mobilize them. We have to encourage them. We have to keep them adequately informed so that we shall not fail. And we will not fail in Jesus' name. Then number three, nurturing role. Nurture. To nurture means what? To nurture means to care for and encourage the growth or development of somebody or something. Yes, to nurture means to care for and encourage the growth 
or development of somebody or something. Listen, to care for and encourage the growth or development of somebody or something. A leader that does not grow, can he raise somebody? Can he grow anybody? Let me ask you, eh? a leader that does not know anything, can he bring anybody into the knowing? So if you want to nurture, the first thing is that you have to develop yourself. Make sure that you yourself, you have grown to a certain level. Otherwise, you cannot grow anybody. You cannot nurture anybody. So, to grow them and develop them, it means to, to help, help somebody, somebody or something, something yes, to develop uh -huh. and, be successful. and be successful. It is expected that middlemen leadership provides nurture that are spiritual, vocational, hmm. entrepreneurial, hmm. academics, hmm. And material mm -hmm. and, uh, and marital, marital to its members yes. through embracing central or decentralized programs, yes. such as seminars, yes. lectures, yes. prayer retreats, yes. crusades, crusades, etc. Yes. This leadership retreat is yes. an acid test yes. on how effective yes. we as middlemen leaders yes. at our various levels of leadership. Yes. Of yes. Leaders. Yes. If we have any coordinator that is not here now, it means something is missing out. Missing out. But I can see we are many. Because how many are we expecting? I can only region about 52 coordinators. Isn't it? SCN region. All of, about 120. Well, we are still okay. We are still okay. So we are to nurture. To help somebody or something to develop and be successful. Our youths, they are looking unto us. Like that uh, leper, the, that uh, lemma at the beautiful gate of the temple. He said he was looking at who? At who? Peter and uh, expecting what? To receive. To receive something from them. And uh, what you don't have, you cannot give. If you are a docile leader, you cannot expect. Your, your, your youth, your followers to be active. If you are not knowledgeable in certain areas, you cannot raise your youth to be knowledgeable in that particular area. What you don't have, what you don't have, you cannot, you cannot give. So, it bothers on you first, nurture. Develop yourself. Grow yourself. Eh? Be skillful in your areas so that you can transfer or replicate what you have, who you are, and what you know in the lives of the people that you are you are following it is expected that the middleman leadership provides not just spiritual vocational entrepreneurial entrepreneurial academic marital etc to its members through embracing central or decentralized programs such as seminars lectures prayer retreats crusade etc so this is where they will develop. This is where they will grow. You see, we are having a lot of marital problems today because our, 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 our young brothers and sisters, they don't know that they have to attend marriage seminars. They don't know. They don't know. You see, some have vocational problems. Some have uh, academic problems because they do not know which subject they can choose to arrive at a particular course in the university. Very, very important. So, you have to nurture them. Make sure you organize a program for them that will make, sure, make, sure, that make them to, to develop. Then we have counseling role. So, counsel yes. means to listen to yes. and give professional advice yes. to somebody who needs help. Good. This could be... I'm coming on. To counsel means to, look up, to listen to. That means as middleman leaders, we must have listening ears. People we are living, we are leading, they want to ventilate. They want to pour out their heart. That, you see, one woman called me from America and said, hey, Daddy, I have problems. I just need somebody to talk to. Eh? So I'm developing high blood pressure now. But as soon as I just speak to somebody, then I, I'm, I'm sure I'll be okay. I said, okay, please, mommy, can you speak on? He said, already it's in Nigeria. And he's coming to see me. He came to, she came to my office and then she talked and talked and talked and talked. He said, I didn't know that I've spoken to you. 
I am relieved. So many of our youths, they have burdens in their heart to share with their leaders. And they are looking onto a leader that is so secretive that they can confide in, not basket mouth leaders. Not what? Not basket mouth leaders. Maybe, ah, that sister, I don't know that uh, he has problem or problem like that too. Now, people are carrying problems. So if you see that woman or that sister, what is carrying? Ah, they are not looking like, for, for somebody like you. So somebody they can confide in, somebody that can guide them. Some that they look onto that this, know, this person knows better than I do. So these are people that can be counselors. Counselors. You have you are you are knowledgeable in your own field. Is it marital? Is it profession? Is it, is, is it educational? Eh? Is it uh, vocational? But your youth are looking for somebody they can confide in, that can advise them on what to do at one point of time or the other. Yes, ma'am. This could be in form of marriage counseling. Yes. Career counseling. Yes. Spiritual counseling. Yes. And the likes. And the likes. Youths usually hold in high esteem leaders that provide them with necessary counseling that Good. will affect their destiny positively. Good. Youths, we always look and they hold in high esteem leaders that provide them with necessary counseling that will affect their destiny positively and that is why we are there to cancel them so they don't go astray to cancel them so that they don't derail to cancel them so they don't make wrong choice of married partners to cancel them so they don't make wrong choice of a, a subject in university you want to to study mercy you are you know you have, you have literature and uh, government uh, agree uh, you see so this so disjointed eh? You take a Greek, you drop a chemistry, I want to study medicine. Then you take a economics because you know economics very well. No, 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 no. You need counseling. Your youth needs counseling. Please move closer to them and cancel them. And they will never forget you when they succeed. They will never forget you when they succeed. These are your roles as middleman leaders. God bless us in Jesus' name. Now we have executive role to execute uh -huh. in this context in this context is to do a piece of work perform a duty or put a plan into action good it let's take it one by one to do a piece of work this is what we want to achieve this one you see look at uh, uh, this committee now see saddled with the possibility of planning and executing Youth conference planning and execute the national youth conference. So, when you execute, that means you do certain things successfully, you perform a duty or put a plan into action. That is your role, that is your role in your various capacities. You have executive role to execute. Yes, it also means. It also means to successfully perform a skillful action. Underline that word successfully. Or movement. To do what? To, to successfully, successfully perform, perform a skillful particular action. action. Yes. Or movement. Or it, movement. It could also mean to carry out the decision of a higher it authority. It also mean to carry out the decision of the higher authority. You see, it will come you are to execute the decision, you are to execute the policy of the higher authority in your various capacity. And I pray you will not fail in Jesus' name. Amen. See, we say, ah, ah, we, we often collect receipts. Re those people, they don't listen. When we call meeting, they will not come. When we call prayer, we will not see them. Then what is your role? Then something will be missing. Either you, 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 you miss it in the area of mobilization. Or you miss it in the area of nurturing. Or you miss it in the area of legacy. Something must be wrong. Before you can call people under you to meeting, to prayer, to programs, and they don't come. Something must be wrong somewhere. You will not use, lose your authority in Jesus' name. Yes. This rope presupposes delegation good 
but not abdication. Yes. With its corollary control. Good. This role. The role of executive presupposes what? Delegation. Delegation. You can't do it alone. Otherwise, what happens to uh, Moses can happen to you? Error of clericalism. Thinking you can do everything alone. You can do everything alone. And you don't produce yourself. You, are, you travel for just one week or two years and everything. Look at what Baba said. He said, Pastor Samadhi, I traveled. For how many years? Three. Three years. And everything was going on smoothly. Why? He said, it is people and what? And system. People and structure. People and system. People and uh, structure. So it presupposes delegation with its corollary control. This will go on very well. To go on very well. Pastor Asha is the chairman of the CPC now. Can you do it all? You can't. Why do you have the vision of labor? Why do you have people in the kitchen? People in the protocol? People in the, the uh, where again? Uh, eh? Hollage? Uh, logistics? You see, he cannot do all alone. And I said, I said that he will not abdicate. He must, from time to time, no. Kitchen, what's going on there? Holiday, are we okay? Uh, logistics, is everything going on well? That is it. Executive role. So that means our position is not an armchair position. Where you assign people to duty and you just go and sleep. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. It should be like that. Monitor it, follow it up, and control. Controlling means that uh, making sure things are working according to expectation. If there must be variation, it must be minimal. You see, you set a standard, this is what you want to achieve per time. Yeah, and they are going on the field, they are doing the work, and they are able to achieve this. If there must be variation, it must be minimal. Minimal. And that is because you delegate and you follow it up. May God bless us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, ma. This role may include fund generation yes. and levy, levy collection yes. on behalf of the upper levels of the fellowship. Good. It's your, it's your role. Fund generation, levy collection, conference levy, this levy, that levy. And they say, okay, oh, can you come to this? I say, ah, we are coming. We are, they have not yet responded. Responded. And why are you there? God will give you the wisdom. He will give you the method. He will give you the power. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let's shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Yes, they have been signaling to me that I have uh, maybe about 15 minutes more. No problem. I will do the needful. Now, we have some management principles for effective internal operation that we must make use of. Some management principles that will give us success as middleman leaders. The first one is what you call scala principle. What do I call it? Scala principle. Scala. What, do do? What, what does it mean? It means that uh, authority will always flow from the top to the bottom. And when authority is flowing from the top to the bottom, what it means is adherence and compliance. You don't query authority directly, but you can, using wisdom, make recommendation or offer advice. That is the rule of the game. Scala principle. From the youth, from the national youth department, they will send to the regional, isn't it? Then this is what we want to achieve. This is what we want to achieve. I remember the maybe three or four years ago when they levied us for one thing we want to do. Is it a uh, centenary, centenary anniversary? You see, we, why would they, we were called upon. This is what we expect from you. This is what we expect from you. This is what we expect from you. Okay? Baba will not go down and call uh, DC coordinators. He has never done that and he will never do that one. Scala. Authority will come from the top to the bottom. And we have to comply. That's scalar principle. Then, the second one is a principle, principle of what? 
principle of unity of command. Principle of unity of command is another internal weapon, internal tool for any organization that will be successful. Unity of command. Remember recently, President Buhari uh, issued a command that uh, 500 Naira, 1,000 Naira uh, should cease to be legal tenders, isn't it? However, he allowed 200 Naira to continue being legal tender until the end of uh, June, isn't it? But one of his governors rose again to issue a counter command. Who is that governor? Eh? He said, he said, don't mind him. <laughs> See, you are all aware. He said, don't mind him. Eh? As far as I'm concerned, 100 naira because Supreme Court, the Supreme Court has given uh, a body. So, 100 and 500 naira, 1,000 naira will still continue to be legal tenders without making consultation with his sitting president. And in any situation, any organization, in any country, there must be unity of command. That means every subordinate is responsible to only one leader per time. Every subordinate is responsible to only one leader per time. If I issue an order, another person issue the same order or counter order, running by the uh, administration, then the question will be, who do I obey now? Who do I obey now? So we must give, we must give uh, authority to the principle of unity of command. Command. And then you can see that unity of command and scholar principle, you can see that they go hand in hand. By unity of command means only one order at a time. And that order will come from where? From the top. From the top. Now, top is top. Youth department, we have the director of uh, youth director, isn't it? That we have assistance, isn't it? For Babagu, you wrote to issue a command. For Pastor Ok, to go and issue another command. Emanating from the same office. There is problem already. Isn't it? There is problem already. Problem of who do we obey now? Who do we obey now? So for smooth administration. Okay, thank you. For smooth administration, then there must be unity of command put in place. We must have that knowledge that we are responsible to one leader at a time. One fold, how many, how many shepherds? One shepherd. One shepherd. One jara contra rules, contra directives. Something is happening. I'm sure it will not happen to us in Jesus' name. Will you be happy as a leader to issue an order and somebody assisting you or somebody acting on your behalf issue an order? order? Will you be happy? You can't be happy. You can't be happy. So when it comes from the top, and we are, we are able to identify that this thing is from the youth department, especially from the mouth of the youth director, or is properly, properly delegated respons uh, representative, then take it. And we have the power. Baba, we receive this message from so so so. so. Is it from your office, sir? Yeah, it's from my office. Then we we'll go on. Because the Assistant Youth Director has no administrative capacity to issue any instruction, to issue any command from that office, except it is proof that he has been so delegated to issue that instruction. You go help us in Jesus' name. That is administration. That is administration. Amen, somebody. Then, number three. Principle of delegation and control but not abdication. abdication. Principle of delegation and control, but not 
abdication. The other said, corollary to delegation is a control. That's it. Delegation means assignments of responsibility, assignment of duty to someone to act on your behalf in certain situations. That's a delegation, which is normal. Which is normal. And that one dated back to several years ago, Adam Smith. Several years ago, eh? Abraham Maslow. Eh? They are these people are the proponents of delegation. You cannot do all things alone. You are going to wear yourself out. Jethro came to Moses. Why are you wearing yourself out? You want to kill yourself? Eh? Since when you have not eaten, he said, eh, People that are coming to me, they are so many, and I don't want to disappoint them. Ah! If you are not careful, number one, you will first of all disappoint yourself, and then you are going to disappoint people coming to you. Because when you are not okay now, and the queue is very long, you see, many of them will go, they will go back home unattended to. Why don't you choose some people, give them responsibility, and then they will be reporting to you. Trivial matters they will handle. Only major matters that they could not handle will come to your own table. Delegation. Delegation. Baba has been our chairman for so many years. Delegation. Eh? In Bamiga, I'm a one yara. I'm a masu. I've never got to go to Eh, chairman, chairman, over, 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 over. Praise the Lord. So, because we feel that by the principle of delegation, we are put things in place. And this we continue to work on, work on well. So if the fellowship will move forward, that principle must be imbibed. Delegation. Delegate assignment. And control it. Don't abdicate. You know the meaning of abdication? When you delegate, and you just feel that uh, all will be well. You don't monitor it. You don't control it. Why do we say, okay, ba -ba -ba -ba, oh yeah, let's go to the kitchen. Asha was there. At the tiger of the kitchen, we will not, yes, we will not say he is the tiger of that kitchen. We will still go there. Pastor Asha, what is happening here? Is everything going on well? Eh? We call the uh, Kalejari accommodation. We call all these people. You see, that means that we do not abdicate our responsibility. We follow it up. We monitor it up so that there will be not too much uh, variance or variation, delegation of responsibility. You see, and uh, when you are delegating, make sure that um, you delegate to a trusted person. To what? Person that will not frustrate your efforts. That will not, will, will not destroy your, 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 effort, your labor and effort. To the glory of God, more than four years before we put the new executive in place. I, as the secretary, I had technically stepped aside. I'm about to for me. Over four years, technically, I had stepped aside. And he was acting fine. Eh? If you need my signature, just bring, I will sign. We are the one doing, doing it. Today, he can do better than I can do. He's doing it more than I, can, more, more than I was doing it. Yes. He's a trusted delegatee. What? Trusted delegatee. And he's performing fine. So, you want to perform well, you want to excel as leaders, middleman leaders, then learn to delegate. Principle to delegate. of harmony of objectives. Principle of harmony of objectives. You see, you have your own goal, you have your own vision, isn't it? The fellowship has its own goal and vision. Do not superimpose your own goal or vision on the goal and vision of the fellowship. You are not doing well. You are not a good leader. You are not a good representative. Harmony of objectives. In carrying out your own vision, make sure it does not affect the overall vision of the fellowship. You are not doing well if you have a central program and you go and organize your own central program. Bye 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 bye. 121 days. You are not a good leader. Are you? You are not. And that is why it's, it's rampart among us. If you don't seize, we don't stop that one. Hardly can the fellowship move forward. We cannot achieve our goal. 
harmonize your objective. That is, making sure that uh, you realize your vision, but not to the detriment of what? Overall vision of the fellowship. That is when you are harmonizing. I'm not looking for it. We call it synchronization. You synchronize. You synchronize your objectives. Very, very important. God will help us mightily in Jesus' name. Amen. But this time I said to you, God bless you. The Pareto principle. Pareto principle. Rule. 80 20 rule. This is also very important. And the borders on the leaders. This rule says that. Uh, Eighty percent of the result that we produce is caused or produced by only twenty percent of the of, of, of the membership. In the rule, even even the church project going in the church, we see very lot of project achievement success. Very few people cause it to happen. Very few people. So that means don't expect all members of your fellowship to function uh, uh, in the same way optimally financially. So bad those people here fail your mouth. Thank God for the past leadership. Thank God for the present leadership. You know how much you have spent to make sure that this program is holy. I bet you can't assemble can't do This is can't do No. Few people, Nehemiah said, Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 12 said, And I arose in the night. I am what? And few men with me. Don't wait for majority because before you do what? Before you achieve success. Don't wait for majority. You are very, very important. You are very, very keen to the success of the fellowship. Eh? And I pray God will give you the power to meet up and not disappoint your generation. In Jesus' name. I have about five minutes more. Let us conclude uh, with Job 31. Job 31, verse 6. Somebody read? Job 31, verse 6. Job 31, 6. This is somebody that was Job said, Let me be weighed on honest scales. Let me be weighed. Or honest scale that God may know my integrity. Yeah, and I said that God may prove my integrity. Weigh yourself now. In the light of all these points that were listed up, your role as middle man leader. And how adherent are you to the principles already put in place? Let me be weighed on an even balance. Let me test my integrity. You see, and told him, told that I do not listen to him. But that is why we all are wadi. We go seeking you. Because ordinary, can ordinary person say that one? To buy wadi, to marry only that. I'm telling. you. Let me be weighed on an even balance that God will prove and know my integrity. Where is your integrity? My man mentioned integrity when he was lecturing us. Eh? Living a awesome life, outstanding life, eh? a life of no little or no deficiency. How are you? What kind of a leader are you? Are you operating in your own level as DCC and Zona coordinators? Let me be weighed on an even balance that God will test. My integrity. As middle man leaders, let, let us, us examine how well we are feared in the low expectations listed above. Is there any need for improvement? Let it be well considered. Thank you for your attention. God bless you.